right, uh, good afternoon everybody. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, commenting on some comments here and other things. So, uh, first of all, my friend uh, Reb Asher Meza made a video, he talked about a little bit uh, our history working together. A few things he left out. He, people saw that video, you don't need to watch it, but you want to, you can. So he mentioned a Garris that we did together, and he had been on Besden for Garris before, as had I. And it was, uh, this was really Mamasha Gir Lechumra, where the person's uh, mother's mother was was Jewish, and he knew her. And uh, just because it was maybe uh, a Shaila, uh, uh, you know, maybe a Suffolk, we made a, a gear lechumer, and I called my Rav and asked him, this guy is telling us his mother's mother was Jewish, could we count him for a minion? He said yes. He said he would. He would. So then I said, so then, but I said, you know, we have a mikveh here. We have three from guys. Uh, if we, uh, if he's willing to be Shemr Shabbos and put fillin every day, keep kosher and everything, should we table him? You know, make a gear l'chum. He said, if he's willing to do that, of course you should. Uh, so you know, we made the hatav esdam and the mila erev Shabbos, and and he kept Shabbos from then on, and he's still from. And he learned in yeshiva for a long time, and he was accepted in yeshiva. And there was there was some issues about it, but self called self. Uh, he eventually did make a gear l'chumra again, uh, another one. And uh, and that was the story. That was uh, what are we doing here? So, what is this guy doing? What's everybody doing? I don't even know. So anyway, I don't even know what's going on here. I just want to get gas, but it's kind of kind of weird. So anyway, we. Got distracted a little bit. Um, no, I can't. I can't go here either. So anyway, we um, we did this gear lechumra, and uh, and that was the story. And then again, like I said, with I think the RCA had him do another gear lechumra. So uh, that's that's one part of the story. The other thing, uh, he said something about Ralph Cook in the 40s and 50s. Ralph Cook died in 1935, um, but it was indeed Ralph Cook who was pushing. He said something that uh, you know, if someone is really serious about converting, they should move to Israel, which is silly and and it has no source in halacha. The next thing is that the. Uh, Next part of the story was uh, the other thing that Reb Usher said. He said that you could, what? He said that you could make your own Siddur Kedushin. That's another thing he claims. Now, make uh, din Yes, you're allowed to make your own Siddur Kedushin. Really, the the Chosen himself, classically, was the one who would. Who would uh, the the Chosen would be the one who would say the brachas of Siddur Kedushin, and in the old days people knew the halachas on their own, and they'd be Messiah Kedushin for themselves. But the the way that it's done today, and it's been this way for thousands of years, is that is that the Rav should be Masader Kedushin. And they said that in the halachas, you shouldn't, no one should be Isaac in Kedushin unless they know, unless they know Hilchus Kedushin. So this, this claim that he said that people should make, uh, should be Messiah Kedushin on their own. It's really, there's no, there's, it's not, it's not proper for him to say that. Because you, you 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 have to have a rav who's Messiah Kedushin, but more than that, there's another issue, and that issue is 
that there is such a thing as the Marda Asra. I mean, you have a community where you um, where you have a chief rabbi of a community. You're not allowed to go into a community and do whatever you want. You can't start your own shul. You can't start your own minion. That you can't. Uh, you can't uh, make Sidra Kedushan, you can't make Gittin, you can't make uh, a, a whole bunch of other things. Uh, Shechita, you can't build a, a communal Erev, and, you, and, you, and like we said, uh, and you can't make Geras in a community where there's a Mardasra. Now, how do you understand a community that has a Mardasra? What's, what's the difference? And when you have a community that has a Mardasra, the, he's the rav of the town Vehaglilois, meaning all the surrounding areas, uh, which means really from there until really halfway to the next established uh, from community, that's where one has the din of a Asra. So like our community, we have one shul, a year-round shul, Rabbi Fishbein is the rav here. So really anywhere from here uh, in White Lake, town of Bethel, certainly the whole town, not just not just here, like walking distance to the shul, but anything within the town of Bethel, because there is no other year-round shul in the town of Bethel, and anywhere that's halfway in any direction to the next established community, uh, you have to have permission from the Marda Asra before you can do certain these things. Um, and so that would be, uh, and, and it's the same thing, all these other little towns around here, you can't just do what you want, it's not Hefker. Uh, that's something we have to understand. And some bigger communities have the same din. So, for example, uh, New Square, Curious Joel, Elizabeth, New Jersey, um, a lot of these communities, it's not only Hasidic communities, you know, Elizabeth, New Jersey, pretty much when uh, Rev Tights was the Rav there, that was it. You couldn't, you, you couldn't make your own shul, you couldn't do whatever you want. Um, it's not Hefker. That's the Halacha. So, um, uh, and that's the way it always was in Klal Yisrael. So, meaning, you know, uh, and this idea, it, it's rooted in Chazal, and the Achorinim really made it clear. Now, if you have a place like, um, you know, Borough Park, or Muncie, where you have hundreds of, of Kehillahs, uh, and you don't have one central rabbinical authority, um, so then it's a little bit different. But still, Afal Picheng, you'll have certain people who are recognized in those communities as taking a chryas for the community as a whole. Um, I, you know, again, you know, we've lost a lot of our great people. But, you know, I'm thinking in Muncie, for a long time, Reb Moshe Green would be, you know, the godl of Muncie. And, uh, and in Borough Park, maybe Reb Cheskel Road. Unfortunately, we've lost both of these great tzaddikim who, who I had a schus to have a little bit of shaykhist to, a very small amount of shaykhist to, um, but, but nonetheless, uh, you know, met them and, and gave them shalom, uh, davened with them and so forth. Um, so these are things, you know, essentially to have in mind that that you know you shouldn't just do what you want and the same thing is if you live in a community where you have an established community it's it, there's no chokhmah in going to usher meza or drawer uh, rav drawer or any of these other rabbis who independently perform gerus or me, um, 
if you live in an established community. You know, I have people, they call me, they live in Muncie and they want to be Maguire. And I tell them, why are you coming to me? You live in Muncie. You know, you have you have a best in there, you have go to them. So, well, maybe they're a little too Haredi for me. And, and the truth is, you don't have to make a gear. Becoming a gear is not getting smicha. And really getting smicha is also not getting smicha, but that's a different story. Um, I remember uh, someone who I know, he was, he went today to Haredis to meet the Geyer. And the Rabbanim were there, big Rabbanim were there. And they, they were for hearing him all in Yiddish. And he was answering all in Yiddish. And they got to one question, they stumped him. And uh, the Ravid, uh, Moshe Sternbach, Shlita, he was sitting there watching. And he said, he, he, he's becoming a gear, he's not getting Dayanus. He doesn't need to know the answer to that. He's fine. They're Maguire him, of course. You know. So, uh, you know, these are the things that, that, you know, people, you know, th these types of questions. What kind of serious gear would do this and that? Becoming a gear doesn't mean you have to become a, 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 a chonyok, you know. It means that yeah, you're going to keep Shabbos, Kashras, Tarsa Mishpocha, basics, put on tefillin every day. You know, and, and it doesn't mean that you're not going to eat kabrox. You don't want to eat kabrox because I'm saying, hey, you don't have to eat kabrox. I'm saying that you're only going to eat machine matzah. You want to only eat machine matzah? You, you don't want to only eat hand matzah because I'm saying, hey, you know, we, we've discussed the, the halachas, this and that. And I, I only eat hand matzah. I don't eat machine matzah on, Shab, on Pesach. Um, but, but, you know, you got to know what you're getting into. Um, you know, uh, and all these other things, and and that includes, according to Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, who I know a lot of people are chaylik on him, but self calls self, he's mekubel in, in the in the Klal Yisrael in America to be a poisik, a very pretty much a major poisik ador, and Rabbi Moshe says that a, 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 a garis where a woman is not going to cover her hair, the garis is chal. That that's his psak. So again, I have to be firmer than Reb Moshe. The truth is, Reb Moshe did a lot of Gerson, even he himself. It was, a, you know, someone, they were pregnant already, whatever it is, Reb Moshe did. And, and, they, and, and he didn't ask too many questions. He, he made the Gerus, and that was it. He didn't, and, then, and then, like, uh, one of his... One of his Talmudim, you know, gave Adis about this. He said, and then, you know, so you send the cure of rabbis later to move the car of them. You know, but you, you get the garris done first. Because really, the truth is, it's a big, big shayla the way we do garris today. I mean, it, I'm not saying it's wrong. It's the right thing to do. The person should learn everything. But really, it's a shayla. Are you allowed to learn before the garris? Uh, we pass in that you are allowed to. But, uh, you know, there's a, there's enough on the other side to say, no, it's better to shnella height, you do the gears, and then and then you, you learn later. You know, you, you, it's mixes kulis, mixes chamuris, and that's it. So, that, you know, and, and I'm not being a renegade here, I'm not being an apikoris, I'm saying what the halocha is. Really, it's apikoris, it's the other way. For someone to say that you can only be Megai or someone... You know, if they if they they're the strictest of the strict, that's apikorsis. That's it, it, you know, because because the, the, the halacha is chuka achas chem kager. It's one halacha as the ger v'lazer chaloritz. Many times it says it all throughout the chumash. So for someone to say, you know, only going to be a, 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 only going to make someone a ger if. This and that, and the truth is, I've been on Besdin with big rab on him, and I thought for Garrett, I I remember the first time I brought a couple to be Megar, a big two big day on him, and I thought, you know, these they're not really that serious, they're not ready, they're not this, and the and the Besdin's are going to turn them down. The Besdin was so impressed by them, and uh, and they're both still from they they didn't stay together. It was the husband and wife; they didn't stay together, but they they're both still from. They're both, you know. I, I I was mistaken and 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 I had that wrong hashkofa, you know, uh, on many many things. 
And certainly when you have someone who already made, let's say, conservative gayers, which there are some shilas on the conservative gayers, even though the, even I know Ramayisha Paskin said there's no shilas and there's nothing, but uh, I think Reb David said that his father, if he knew what a conservative gayers really was, probably would have Paskin differently. So, the uh, you know, so someone they went to a conservative gayers in a kosher mikveh, uh, probably three Shomer Shabbos guys were the Besdin, the rabbi and the cantor, and like the one old guy in the shul who's also Shomer Shabbos and puts on tefillin every day. You know, and comes to the conservative minion every day and something, you know. Uh, you're going to say that that Geras is in Chal? Uh, at the very least, you could say he's a, he's a, a Jew Lechomer and a Goy Lechomer. You want to say, you can't use him for Shabbos Goy, but maybe you don't want to count him for minion either. Uh, and, but maybe if he's the tenth, you count the Cotton, you count the Evid, maybe count him, maybe, you know. These types of things. So... So, you know, this whole idea, a serious scare, this and that. What are you talking about? Well, of course, most Gerim become frumer than most born Jews. There's no question. A lot of Gerim become fine, Erlich, Chasid, Shayid, and Talmud, Chachamim. Beautiful. And that's how it should be. But, if to be realistic, not everybody is. But still, you have to be, you have to do things that are responsible. For many different reasons, there's there, there's a lot of cheshboynus why someone uh, should you know, and it's up to a bezdin to decide. And if a bezdin has rishus, meaning, you know, uh, I go, I use a mikvah that's an established mikvah, and they give us rishus to use a mikvah for geiris. That's essentially we have rishus to to make a, to make a geiris, right? So. Um, and if it's in the middle of nowhere or whatever it is, there's a lot of cheshboinus you can make. Um, but the thing is, what you should understand, though, is when you're making a geiris with me or Usher or Avdror or any of these other uh, people that are not recognized, uh, you're taking a risk that people are not going to accept it. And uh, and maybe you have to make another geir You know, I remember... Uh, there was a, a guy I know, he lives in Muncie now, and he first did the conservative Geras, and then he did the orthodox Geras, and he, and he was learning in Orsameach, and he asked, uh, he asked the Roshiva, Roshiva laughed, oh, a guy who made the Geras with that rabbi, he wants to be Hasidish, that's cute, but all right, it's kosher, you don't need to make another Geras, it's the orthodox Geras. Then he went to go learn in Bells, and in Bells they said, you know, Okay. Doesn't they? It's a good team. And that's a story. So, um, So that's what they have to say. Um, now I was going to maybe talk a little bit about these guys, Mizrahi and Ruvain and some of the other chevra. I made one video. Uh, maybe make another video about them. But so, so you know, and, and Rebasher will be the first to tell you that. You come to him, it's not going to be recognized. And it's not, you know, it might be. It's not a guarantee it won't be, but mostly it won't be. You know, so you're not doing yourself a favor going to him necessarily, unless you live maybe in the middle of nowhere, and and you don't plan to move. But then I've had people. I'm dealing with that now. I had someone. They told me I'm absolutely not moving to Eretz Yisrael. And then, uh, then, and then they they're trying to move to Eretz Yisrael. And they're having a very hard time. So you gotta know what you're getting into. Um, so thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment. See you all later.